Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaias here from the Automator. And today we got a really cool regex example that Isaias, um, we were talking about a look ahead or look behind stuff. And after he he gave me showed me this demo this morning, I'm like, oh my God, it's it's so much easier to understand with this simple example. I don't really, now that I, at least in the example he's doing, it, it made me realize I don't like the term look ahead, even though I, I get what they're doing. But right. um, yeah, let's just jump into it here. And what's really helpful is like, Sometimes you're looking for multiple things and you want to actually say, hey, if there, I find this and this and this, and I, and here's the crazy part. You don't care about the order. Like right. this is phenomenal. Right. So here um, we're used to this website because the one that I usually use is down for now, but here's the idea. I want to match only strings that contain the one, the words one, two, and three. It must contain the three things it doesn't matter the order. And that's the key part that I was trying to solve a problem in which I was matching, uh, think about them as components to a string. So there were in the text, there were certain things that I cared about the day, the hour, stuff like that. And each of those components had their own re regular expression, but I wanted to match them individually. But the key part is it didn't matter the order in which they were on the string. So that was annoying at first, but then I learned about this way of using look aheads that it changed my view of regular expressions. Now, the key part here, um, we have a regular expression up here. Um, those slashes and stuff like that, in other languages, you need to use them. In our hotkey, you don't. You set the options for regular expressions in a different way. We don't care about that. So just ignore those two slashes and the G. Forget about those for now. I want you to focus on the regular expression plans over here. So the first thing is I'm going to start matching at the beginning of the string anything until the end of the string. And right now, um, I'm going to make this uh, one of the flags. I'm going to make it multi-line because we have multiple lines here. So that is the M option. When you're dealing with auto hotkey, um, when you're dealing with auto hotkey, you would just, if you have a regular expression, you would have to put that in an M like this and then an open parenthesis and then your regular expression, okay? So to do exactly the same as I'm looking there, control, start, ending like this, that's the same as what you're looking at here, but that M right there, you would put it here. That's it. Now, here's the thing. Right now, it is matching all the lines, and they're marked in blue because they are matched. But I don't want that. I want to match the word one, but notice that right now, it's only matching the one that is at the start. That's not exactly what I want. And if I put other things like two and three, it still only matches that. Now, let's work to the look ahead. Look aheads, you start them off as a grouping. And at the beginning of the grouping, you have to put the question mark and the equal sign saying, look forward to see if the string contains what I'm looking for, the word one. That's okay. But I also want to match anything that is previous to the word one. That way now it is matching all the lines that contain the word one. It doesn't matter where the one is. So good. But as I mentioned, I want you to match if they have the three words that I'm looking for. So let's add a secondary look ahead. Now the text must contain the word one and it also must contain the word two. Notice how this one here got unselected because that one does not contain the word two. It was matching previously, but now it says two. And notice how the others are matching anyways. It doesn't matter if it started with one and then it has two, but if it has two and then finds one, it also matched it. And again, and now add the third look ahead, which is three, and boom. Let me add here the fact that it doesn't matter where it's located. Now, this string is matching all the 
text that contains those three words specifically in any order. So this one has the two, three, and one. This one has the three, two, and one, and so on and so forth. This is amazing because, um, and Joe, you right away asked, can I group those right away? Yes, you can. So not only you can check ahead whether the, and this is the special property of the word look ahead of the that function, is that even though it looks ahead, it says, yes, this tree can match that. It is not taking the word one. So if I match the one one out here, it will match one. It looked forward. It looks for any string that contains the three of them, but it then matches only if it finds one and more. So it is very, very specific on the fact that it looks ahead, but it doesn't consume the looking for whatever you're looking for. The restate of the summarizer real quickly is the look ahead is saying, hey, make sure for your these things are there. Right. right. It's not in any way grabbing or doing no, anything. No, anything. Exactly. They're great. Yeah. But what if we did want to grab those things and store right. them? Right. At that point, then you can definitely for the word that you're looking for or the whole grouping if you want. Um, you can create now a new group in there and you can name it whatever you want. So my group and then match the word one. In that case, later on, you can use that to say, okay, match that word into this variable. And then you can access that variable with that name, whatever it is. In this case, the, the example is so simple because I'm just matching one, two, and three, but I don't know, Joe, if I can show the example of the code, how it matches the day, the um, yeah. moment. So, so uh, let me do this really quick. So in this instance, I am defining the word day as very specific ways that are matching some numbers in the stream. The word month, exactly the same way. This is what it would match a specific month. And the year, it must be four digits long, not preceded by a single quote before the year and so on. That's how I define those components later on I create my grouping here called day using that definition, even if they follow the word first, second, third, you know, those, because you might have some dates in which you say uh, March 3, 2024, but you might also have March the 3rd like this, and you can have it like this. In those two instances, it will correctly grab the word March and put it in the month. It doesn't matter how it is, where it is. So if I had 03 March, you know, 24, that would also grab the word March and put it in my variable called month. And in here it's gonna say the day, and in here it's gonna say the year. Now, what I'm doing later on, once I have my month matched, I'm converting the word month into its numeric representation. So if I have May, we will return five. That way I only have numbers. I have the day that is two numbers. I have the year that is numbers as well. And if it is a month, it would be converted to the month, to the number. And then it will allow me to format the date however I want, because we have this format time function that you give it a specific format of a date, and then you can change that however you want. That's perfectly dual. So our definition of the components, individual components, and then using the look aheads, these are the look aheads, those three right there, and then matching them into a variable name allows me to later on refer to them by saying matched year or matched month. You know, so I can refer to the variable and it's clearer for me later on down the line when I'm creating my code to go ahead and make sure 
that everything is exactly as you want. So that was a very good example of how look aheads can be used to match stuff. It doesn't matter the order they're in your stream. So A, we taught you a little bit about look aheads and how to use stuff, but but also as I go back to your class and just give a quick example of let's say you had a of date range you were looking you're like hey i'm getting some text i'm pretty sure it's a date i want to use this class to say look at it and then store it in a certain format for me so you would parse you would use the date dot parse function like this right and you would put the date let's use one of these guys and then you would just tell it how you want it formatted. Well, at this point, I want the beautiful part as far as I'm concerned of like right. So this is going to be <laughs> my month, day, and year like this. So yeah. so so the point is, you not only solve the complex part of looking at something and figuring out what the day is, you also made it super simple to say now return it back into whatever format I want to give it, right? Like there it is. is. So you March know. the 3rd, 2024 is 3-3-2024. Now, now for form. fun, cha- literally on the text there, move to the 03 or make it March 3rd, right? Change it like you said. Okay, yeah, of course. Or now let's do this. Yeah. Right? Now, and, and let's use um, December insert so that we can see the difference there. This is what we get. Yeah. Right. Even though December is on the second place, my formatting said it must be put at the beginning, so now it is there. Now, it doesn't matter if you just gave me half of the day of the year. I, it will recognize that and still set 2024 there. Oh, I want it with dashes instead, you see? So now, um, in the example I sent you, uh, I had a list of dates, like a lot of them, and I just ran the program through them, and it just gave me the formatted date for each of them individually. So perfectly oh no i i i i have a bunch of text that has dates in them but i want that all the dates to be reformatted to a specific format that i want well there you go this is what this particular function does now um for now i consciously decided only to match text based dates right but the way how i defined this and the way how i can set up the look aheads I can later on define a way of matching a, a date that is, you know, 0, 3, 12, 3, 24. And I would, you give me that and I would divide it into components in a way that later on you can change the format into anything else that you want. So basically just know that right now, this part, this type of matching of dates like this is not supported yet. It is something that I will do later on. Yeah, that's just crazy awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. One is the, the you did a great job simplifying the explanation of what we're doing. But the fact that now if people want to grab this function, we'll, we'll put a download here. They can grab it. And by the way, this is where, you know, in the automator now, when you go to download something, we give you the option of donating $3 for future scripts, right? And this would be a perfect example of like, hey, this stuff takes us time. Like mm-hmm. hours, you know, developing besides recording the video, editing video, put it on there, do all the stuff. It's time. So it's, you know, it just helps. Every little bit helps. But um, thank you, Zayas. That was a really, really good lecture. Uh, this is where also, like, we discuss things like this in the Hero Group. So the if you're interested in learning more and being more efficient, the Hero Group's a great way to do that. Uh, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed this and learned something. Yeah, we're the largest auto hockey channel out there. We release videos twice a week. This is what we do full time, guys. This is all we do. Basically, is finding ways to save time. And this is where it's fun. Is we we had talked with the client because this is actually we're using it for a client. But we said, do we want a quick solve or do we want a more robust solution? Where now, like this is going to be really something we can use over and over, and then. At some point, we'll add that other part where it's just using the number date ranges. Exactly. Yeah, very cool. Cheers.